Okay, so where we left off, uh, we've now added a bunch of FSCQ files in, but let me show you the properties that, that are set here. So the first thing we have is the FSCQ file itself. Um, obviously you can change this. Within the FSCQ file, the FSCQ file actually points to the audio file that it was created with, unless it's an animation sequence, in which case obviously it doesn't. Um, if you want to override that audio file, maybe the audio file is no longer in the same location and you need to point to the new location, you can click here, override audio and go and find the audio file that you want to use. But generally speaking, you're probably running it on the same computer that that has your show and you don't need to do that. Um, the blend mode, uh, we won't touch now. We'll come back to the blend mode when we start to talk about some of the advanced configurations. Uh, this controls how we merge uh, data together. Um, when we have multiple um, FSCQ files and the like. Uh, limit channels, again, we'll come back to later, but basically what limit channels does is it lets you restrict the number of, or which channels are actually used when you're playing your show. Again, in this mode, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, so we'll come back to that later. Fast start audio. Uh, one of the things you'll notice when you use the scheduler is as it jumps from song to song, it does pause. And the reason it pauses is because we are loading in the audio and then we have to basically process the audio and convert it into a format that the computer is actually able to play. And that takes a little bit of time. It can take a couple of seconds. If you do fast start audio, what will happen is when the sequence is loaded, we'll actually go through and pre-process all of the audio files. And that way, when you play your show, you won't have as big a pause as it switches from step to step. Now, I, I must admit, I've never actually sat here and timed it and worked out just how quickly it is, but it's a lot faster than it otherwise would be. Override volume lets you come in and basically you can reduce the volume of your song just for this song alone. And so you can set that to whatever level you want to have it at. Or if you turn it off, it plays at the default volume. And this is where you set the priority. In this case, priority is not going to make any difference. Um, delay is also something you can set. Generally, you wouldn't do. What this will do is basically create some dead time at the beginning of this step. Um, there are reasons why you might want to do that, but not, not in simple mode when you're just playing your show. The two minute animation here. So this is our, our sequence and video. This allows you to go in and also add a video file. Um, you saw I had a few videos here. Over here, pick our PLS video. Uh, you get to choose whereabouts on the screen that video gets displayed during that step. Um, and other than that, everything here is exactly the same as an FSCQ uh, setup. And with audio, you've got a lot less. Obviously, you can still fast start it. You can still override the volume. You can set some priorities, but otherwise, there's not a hell of a lot you can do um, with audio. And that's a playlist. Uh, here it tells you how long the playlist is in total in seconds. If you click on it, you can see it all over here. Um, and if we were to play it, which we can do by clicking on play selected, and hopefully this audio is not going to be too loud. I can hear it. I'm not sure you can. So you can see um, that virtual matrix that we created has appeared and it's actually displaying the channel data. Now the channel data is all a bit screwy because um, the matrix is not really defined that way in my show, but you get a feeling for what that's going to look like. Up here, you can see in green, we have the song that's currently playing and in yellow, the song that the scheduler believes will play next. If the scheduler doesn't know, it won't highlight one. If I click next step, it'll jump forward and so forth until it gets to the end. So that's a playlist playing. If we want to schedule a playlist, we come up here and we either right click on it and choose a schedule or we click on it up here and we come down and click the schedule button. Uh, schedules can be enabled or disabled. In this case, obviously, we want to enable it. Uh, we'll give it a, a name. We'll call it Christmas. Uh, we get to choose a start date. Okay, it's in, for some reason, it's in American order. I'm not sure why that is. Um, but we can say we want to start in December, finish at the end of December. 
Um, the every year just means that it'll ignore the, the year at the end. Um, so every year between the 1st of December and the 31st of December. And then I can choose which days of the week. So while the, the time period's really large, I can say, well, actually, no, I only want to play it on Fridays using this particular schedule. I want to start it at 7 o'clock. And, uh, you know, in this case, it's going to end at 10 p.m. But you could also change this to be uh, 3 a.m. And it will quite happily play it across midnight and stop it at 3 a.m. in the morning. You select loop if you want it to continue to play the playlist during this time period. Otherwise, what will happen is it will play it through once and stop. And so it won't keep playing it through till 3 a.m. Uh, you can set the number of loops, which you should set to zero if you want it to loop as many times as it can. And shuffle will cause it to play the songs randomly during that period. With shuffle, the only thing that it guarantees is that it won't play the same song twice in a row. And if you have less than four songs, it will ignore the shuffle and just play them sequentially. Um, and again, priority is set if you're going to set up multiple schedules and those schedules could overlap or clash. Um, on the same day, uh, then the priority basically governs which one wins out. So the highest priority one would win out. Uh, so you can set that priority to different levels. When you've added your schedule, you then get to see exactly when the show is going to next kick off due to this schedule, which is the 1st of December 2017 at 7 p.m. Uh, if you want to add another schedule, if you want to create a special schedule for Christmas Eve, you can come in here and you can do exactly the same thing. Um, uh, this will be the 12th, 24. Oops. It's going to end on the same date. 12th, 24. Uh, every year. Um, I, I'll leave this set on every day because obviously uh, w exactly which day of the week uh, Christmas Eve is could be any day, any year. So let's not limit it. Um, and, you know, this one I might want to stop at 1 a.m. on Christmas morning, which I can do as well. And we'll loop it and we'll click OK. And so this one's going to happen. Now, the problem is, is I set these to be both the same priority, which means it's kind of random which one's going to get chosen. So I need to come in here and up the priority a little bit to make sure that uh, the Christmas Eve one, and it doesn't update the date. I don't know why it doesn't do that, but it will later. So this, this makes sure that uh, the Christmas Eve one uh, will take priority over the Christmas one and, and because that's what I want it to do. So that's setting up a simple playlist. So the next thing I want to go through is I want to go through uh, setting up some of the more advanced um, playlist types. So what we're going to do is we're going to up up here and say we're going to add an advanced playlist. And when you add an advanced playlist, there's an additional concept that's introduced, and that's the thing of called a step. So at at the we'll give it a name. And you can still click these add buttons down here, but you can also come up here, right click, and you've now got a whole bunch of different things that you can add. One thing you can do is add a step. And a step contains things that you want to play at once. So steps play sequentially, and anything contained within a step all plays at exactly the same time. And why might you want to do that? Uh, let's just call this one step one. And here we'll go in and let's just add an FSCQ file. And this is exactly like it was before. We can browse and choose an FSCQ file. You can still drag and drop them like we did before. Um, and this will play, this is an animation, so there's no audio. Um, and, and this will work exactly as it did before. But what you can also do now is you can actually add a second FSCQ file within the same step. Um, and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to a higher priority. Remember, this was priority one, so this one's now priority seven. I'm going to find a different FSCQ file, this one here. And what I can do is I can say, actually, I just want you to pull out 1,000 channels starting at channel 1,000, um, and they will basically overwrite the data that was in the two-minute animation, so it will actually blend them together. We also get to control how they blend together. And here it's in overwrite mode, which means those pixels will basically clobber the, the pixel data that was in the other sequence. 
Um, but you can also do things like say only overwrite if the previous pix the pixel was previously black or do masking or do averages which will blend it together or do a maximum which will take the brightest of every channel and apply that as it merges the data together. So this allows you to actually have multiple FSCQ files blend the data together and display it on your show. It's also how you would use uh, an ESCQ file. An ESCQ file is uh, the same as an FSCQ file, but it typically contains the data for just one model. So this is typically how you would bring in your tune to sign. You'd go into X lights, you'd sequence up. Sorry, I'm going to just grab one of these. You would sequence up your um, tune to sign. So I have a P10 panel here somewhere. So long, there it is there. Uh, I would come in here, I'd do an export model. I'd come up to here and I'd choose uh, Falcon Pi E sequence, right? This is gonna be my P10 E sequence, which it renders and saves. And then I can come over here and browse for it. There's my P10 E sequence file, right? And it already within that E sequence file, it knows what offset the P10 panel is and everything else. Um, and it will basically override that data. I'll set that priority nice and high because I want it to override everything else that's come previously. And now my P10 panel will choose its data out of that ESCQ file and not out of my FSCQ files. So that's how you can blend an ESCQ file together. Um, of course, it refreshed then, it sorted them to show you which one's the higher priority. So let's go through some of the others. Uh, the FSCQ video we've already been through. Uh, the video just allows you to just play a video. Um, in this case, obviously, it's playing a video on the screen, so you can choose whereabouts to display it and how large to display the video, and you can choose the video file itself. Um, uh, and yeah, you can delay it so it's it, maybe it starts a little bit into the sequence, that sort of thing. So there's the video. Uh, there's an audio which lets you add um, an audio file. Now, because um, if I had multiple audio files, it will actually play them all at once. It will mix all the sound together and you'll end up with a god awful mess, but it will do it if that's what you want to do. So maybe you've got a sound effect you want to play um, in the middle of the song, in the middle of the song or something, you can do that by setting the appropriate delay, putting the audio file there, and 30 seconds or 10 seconds into your, your sequence, it plays some random sound. I don't know, it's up to you. I, I, I don't design it, you, you decide how you want to do it. An image. So, um, because we can display a video, I mean, you'd also may want to display uh, just a static bitmap, maybe on your projector, you just want to put, you know, the name of your show and who you support or your website or whatever. And so this lets you choose an image. Uh, again, you get to position a window where you want that image to appear. You can choose an image. Um, I don't have many images on here. I don't know. We'll use, a, use our Santa. It's a very low resolution Santa, um, but he'll get displayed when the, the show plays. So let me show you very quickly what this looks like. So you just get a feel for those before we move on to the rest of them. So if we play this, um, there's my Santa bitmap that's come up. Uh, here's my video playing, and this is obviously still my virtual matrix. Again, the data is very distorted because uh, of the channel mappings, etc. but it's there. Um, so yeah, you get that idea. Uh, stop it, they all go away. So we'll double click, we'll go back in. Um, it knows that it's an advanced playlist, so it comes up in advanced mode, so we can keep adding things here. Uh, all set is basically allows you within your sequence to, to choose a set of channels. Um, so you get to choose how long it runs for, you get to choose a value. So if you want to turn everything off, you can set it to zero and you can limit which channels it's going to set to zero um, and, and what role it plays. You'd obviously need to set its priority appropriately. So if you want to blank something out within your sequence at this point, you can use this all set to do a blank out or maybe you want to turn a range of channels all on. That sort of capability is set by using this data here. I feel like I'm rushing through it, but um, 
Yeah. PJ Link. So PJ Link is an Ethernet um, a protocol. So if you plug your uh, projector into an Ethernet port and it supports uh, the PJ Link protocol, we can come over here. Uh, we can choose our projector. Why is our projector not there? That's a good question. Didn't we set one up? Uh, options? No. I lost it for some reason. Projector 192.168.0.1. Uh, click OK and OK. We'll go back into our playlist. We'll go to our. Where's our projector? Oh, there is our projector. Now we can choose our projector. And there's a, a whole bunch of events here that you can send. So you can video mute it, which will turn the lamp off. I, well, yeah, I think it'll turn the lamp off. Uh, audio mute it. If you've got audio going through it, you can also power it on and off um, and change the input using these things. If you wanted to send multiple commands, uh, you could come in and add multiple commands in here and it would send them one at a time. Uh, to the projector, uh, you would, yeah, uh, I, I don't know that, to control the order, you would need to play with the delays and set them a little bit apart uh, to force that to happen. I don't actually have an easy way of doing that. Uh, delay will just put a pause into your show. So if you want to pause the show, you can, you can put a delay in. Um, RDS. So for those of you that have a serial attached um, RDS board, which basically encodes into your uh, radio stream the data that might appear on the digital um, display of someone's radio in their car, um, the RDS protocol is what allows you to do that. And so here you go in, you choose which serial port uh, your RDS uh, is connected to, what speed it's running at, uh, you can type in your station name. Um, station duration is how long it displays that station name for. And then you've got a, a number of different scroll modes and you can put a bunch of text in here. Uh, you can, it does support things like percent album or percent title um, and things like that, which will extract uh, that data out of the audio file and will send it to the person's radio in the car. But you can go in and say, you know, please donate or whatever you want to do and it will display on their car radio if you've got the right devices to do it. Um, uh, the line duration, basically, if it depends on which mode you're in. Yeah, you can change how long the lines are displayed for, etc. So this protocol is all documented in the specs. It's probably come with your device if you've got one of them. Um, you would have to go and set that up on each step to send that data. Adding a process. So a process basically allows you to run any executable on the machine. So if you wanted to launch Notepad, you just type notepad.exe in here. If you wanted to run a command line program, you'd run cmd.exe slash c, um, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. You might want to issue a curl request or, or any other command that you might want to cause to run at this point in your show. Maybe this will call some other device uh, that you want to run at this point in your show. It's really up to you. Um, and the wait for completion down here basically says, wait until this command's finished before you finish this particular, um, this particular process, so it can force things to be sequential if that's what you want to do. Uh, this is very powerful. This basically allows you to trigger anything to happen during your show as long as you've got some other piece of software that will run it. Um, add test. So um, I don't know about you, but I, I tend to run a test of my lights before my show starts. So one of the things you can do is you can schedule a test to run just before your show starts. And you can come in here, you can choose one of the modes. These modes are all very similar to the modes you've seen uh, in X-Lights where you come in and you can say, uh, look, I want value two, so I'm going to turn everything on starting at channel one through for 100 channels and I want to turn it on for 60 seconds. Or I can go in and say, no, I just want it to go A, B, C, which is obviously, you know, red, green, blue, depending on your pixel order. And I want to do 10,000 pixels. 
for 60 seconds and it will just send that data out for 60 seconds. You can run around, do your bulb check, make sure everything looks like it's working and then it can you know, turn off just before your show starts and you can move to the next uh, thing that you schedule. So that's test mode. Uh, curl mode, uh, this basically does a web request. So this will call a URL, it'll do a get or a post. Um, if you're doing a post, you can put your the data in here that you wanna post. Um, again, I think there are some percent commands which lets you do things like put the playlist name or some other pieces of data in, in real time here. Again, this can be used to trigger um, other things to happen. Um, maybe you want to update your website to say what song's currently playing or, or something like that. Uh, you know, obviously, the other end of the process, that's your problem. You need to set that up, but you can trigger it in here um, in any step that you want. The command step. So the command step, we're going to come back, but basically, um, uh, and I do need to fix this name field up because it's too big, but all of these buttons down here actually run commands. And so uh, we'll come back and we'll explore these in a minute. But these are all the, the commands that can be issue, issued to the scheduler, either by pressing a button down here or by scheduling a command to run. Um, or by from a remote device like a web page or an iPhone app or anything else that you care to, to write. You could write a Perl script or anything else to issue these commands. All of these commands uh, are actually web requests. So uh, anything that can send a, a request to a website can issue these commands and control the scheduler. Um, so this lets you do things like um, uh, you know, you can change the volume. So at this point in the thing, you can say, actually, I want to lower the volume of my show by 50%. So maybe you want to schedule at 10 o'clock. It comes in and it reduces the volume of your show so that for the next hour, it runs a lot quieter and you don't disturb the neighbours as much. Um, or maybe you want to turn the brightness down or maybe you want to... Uh, um, force it to go and run a one-off playlist at some point in time. Um, a whole bunch of different things. It, there's, there's really almost nothing that you, you can't do here. Um, and there's a bunch of parameters that you can pass in and, and delay. So you can cause this process, this command to run partway through a song uh, by setting a delay saying, I actually want it to start 15 seconds into the song. I want it to go and do this or that. Um, adding text. So uh, we defined our matrix, if you remember, and so it's, it's populated my matrix here and I can give this, um, I give it a name. Uh, you can decide whether it's a countdown or a normal text. So normal text will just render the text that I enter. A countdown will actually do a countdown um, to a particular date. Um, so I can you know, put Christmas or something in. Um, the text itself, so typically you'd place your message here. Um, this text field can also be set remotely. There's an API that lets you set this. But in order to display the text, you actually have to uh, tell it what to put in. And the reason you have to do that is because you can also here do things like, you know, put the, the current day or the current month. And there's a whole bunch of these that, that will be documented in the manual where you can go and put all of these in and it will display that data um, on this matrix, uh, which I described earlier. You can also come in here and you can choose your font and you can choose your color. Um, you do choose the color here in the rest of X-Lights you don't, but here you choose the color. You can choose how the text is orientated on that matrix. You can choose that it's going to come in from the right to the left, how fast it's going to come in, how you want it to blend with whatever else might be on that matrix. So if you want to blend it, if you want to use it as a mask and so mask out whatever effect is on there. So, uh, you know, you could imagine someone would have a program that they wrote that pulled an SMS text from, from someone and you could send it in here and you could blend it over the top or mask it over over the top of a butterfly effect and you can display the person's name with the butterfly effect as, as the color background or things like that. You can choose where it starts and the priority of course is used to decide how it blends. So you want it to have to be a nice and high priority because you're gonna want it to write over the top of the data, not have other data override on top of it. So the priority becomes quite important. So that's, that's the text. Um, you can add multiple of them. So if you want multiple lines of text, you just add multiple text and play with the Y position and that will work quite happily. 
Um, and that's it. So uh, that's obviously one step. So when, when that step plays, everything here plays at once. If you want to separate things out, you need to add more steps. Um, and if I come in here and I add FSCQ files, right, it's going to add them. Sorry. It's going to add them into their own steps. And the reason it adds them into their own steps is because I obviously don't want them playing on top of one another. I could, but, but I don't really want to. Um, and so you, you can add as many of these detailed processes or you can just leave the one here and that will just play that FSCQ file just like Simple Mode did. In fact, this is what Simple Mode looks like. It has a step with the same name as um, uh, the, the sequence. And you can see that because if you come up here and say, actually, I want to edit it in advanced mode, you can see that that's exactly what it's done. So that's how you go about setting up um, all of those, those various playlist items. There's obviously a lot that you can do in there. Um, I have no doubt there are bugs. I, I, I know there are the RDS I, I can't test because I don't have an RDS device. It's written to the specification. Um, the projector stuff, again, written to the specification, but uh, I, I don't have a device that I can actually test it on. So there's quite possibly um, bugs, etc. But uh, you know, as people report, them we'll try and get them fixed as quickly as possible um, the background playlist which we didn't come to so this is where you can go in and say choose one of your playlists that you've got here and say I actually want that to be my playlist my background playlist and what will what will happen is that playlist will always play in the background um, it will always render last. So if you're going to do a playlist like that, you probably want to make sure that you've constrained the channels that it's writing to because uh, it's going to overwrite anything else that's there. So make sure that you constrain the channels that it overwrites. Otherwise, the rest of your show won't show through. Up here, some simple controls. You, you can adjust the volume right here. Um, this shows you the brightness. This is a global brightness setting. Unless you're running all pixels, I doubt you're ever going to want to play with it. You're more likely to want to choose channels that you uh, have bright. And the rest of these things up here are basically just status fields to show you um, how things are playing. So this shows that it's a manually started playlist. I can shuffle it like this. I can put it into loop mode. I can loop the current step. Um, and so forth. I can also pause it by clicking on here. This tells me that light output is on. This turns it off and so forth. So we'll stop all of that. So, so the only thing I haven't really gone through is all of those button commands. And I'm probably not going to go through them all. I'm going to give you some stuff to self-help. So in the options down here, we have the buttons. And if you go in, you can go in and, and define any button that you want to display down the bottom here. So depending on what sort of show you like to have, you might have a favorite song that you want to play. And so you'll come in here and you'll say, I want to play the, sec the selected playlist. Oh, hang on. Playlist, play playlist, play playlist step. So you're going to play a particular playlist in a particular step and you'll put in the playlist name, comma, the step name that you want to play. Uh, you can assign a hotkey to it if you want to and you click OK. And down here, there's now a button called My Favourite, which you will be able to click on and it will jump to that song and play it. Now, the reason it's greyed out is because that playlist name and that step name don't exist, so it won't let me click on it. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's as simple as it is to go and create the buttons. Um, obviously, there are a lot of different commands there. So how do you work out exactly what they all are? Well, in lieu of the manual being updated, in the GitHub repository for XLites, inside the XSchedule folder, there is a text document called API documentation. 
and this API documentation, which you can you can download and print out, etc., goes and describes uh, exactly how you send that request. So this is the web request that you need to send. Uh, these are the queries. So these are the query APIs that get status, tells you which song's playing, where it's up to, what the matrices are that are available. So if you're doing integration, you, you'll, you'll probably need these. It also, uh, down here, has all of uh, the commands that you can run. So these are all the ways in which you can control it. It describes what it is. It tells you what parameters you need to pass. Uh, when you pass the parameters, uh, you, know, you have this at parameters, oh, sorry, ampersand parameters equals. And if it's one parameter, you just put the, the one parameter. If there's multiple, uh, you separate them with a comma. Um, and some of them have up to three and even four parameters. Uh, there's even commands down here for setting that current text. So if you want to change the text that's displayed on your matrix, you can change the text down here. Um, and look, I will. I did try to record a video showing that, but I had technical issues and never quite finished it. But I will get around to doing that. You can even uh, have it set individual pixels, so you can for cause it to override certain channels. So if you've got your own real-time rendering routine that you want to overwrite the data that's on your matrix, um, and you want to write a program that does that in real time, you can send that channel data to the scheduler via a web API and we will override the data on that matrix and show what you want to show rather than what we would normally show out of the FSCQ file. Um, and then there's a couple other things here. So uh, obviously there's the website itself um, and there's also a stash command which allows you to, your website to save data. So this is how you can save settings and so forth. Um, so when you're in the X scheduler, um, there are settings here, for instance, um, and the settings that we choose to, I think it's broken, but um, on my machine at any rate. Yeah, all anyway, right, so, but look, the playlist here, uh, sorry, uh, the, the website here can pretty much do anything. Uh, the playlists are shown. If I click on the playlist, I can play it. Um, and if you come back to the scheduler, you can see that it's now playing. So everything's controlled in real time from there and it's reflected here. So look, I'm about to run out of time. Um, it's a bit of a whirlwind tour. There's an awful lot in here. You will only get familiar with it by playing with it. But hopefully that's given you a, a reasonably comprehensive introduction to, to some of the capabilities in the scheduler.